Hey guys, and welcome to another C++ programming tutorial from Someone9031. And today in this tutorial, I'm going to go over constructors and deconstructors and how they work with inheritance. So, when you have uh, two classes inheriting from each other, um, how do the constructors and deconstructors work? I mean, the derived class inherits everything else from the base class, so it shouldn't inherit the constructors and deconstructors as well, shouldn't it? Well, no. You see, um, inheritance allows you to inherit most attributes of one class into another, but there are certain things that are never inherited. Number one are constructors, number two are deconstructors, and then number three are copy constructors and any overloading of the assignment operator. Those, um, anything that has to do with constructing and deconstructing of objects uh, are not inherited. That is, that's not to say that the base constructor plays no part in the construction of a derived object. So to show you this, um, what I have here is a brand new class. Um, it's a brand new program. It's not the same animal one that we worked with in the last tutorial because I wanted something really simple for this and yeah the other one just the animal class just didn't work too well so two classes here base and derived and derived obviously publicly inherits from base and base is the base class so what we're gonna do here is set up some constructors so for base you see I've declared uh, two constructors and a deconstructor one of these constructors takes no arguments, the other one takes an integer. So, base. Now, so let's set these up. Base and base. And what we're just going to do, if you look at this class, I should show you around the class first. We just have one private value called int base value. And then we have several. Uh, functions and uh, here we have the derived class and we have uh, once again one private value that is int derived value so I'm also going to use this as a chance to show you how access modifiers work within um, inheritance but that's for the last bit of this tutorial for now we're working with constructors and deconstructors so this default constructor, we're just going to set the base value to 10. And then we're going to see out this is a base constructor. And, oh, wait. Yes, and you should have using namespace std. Otherwise, it won't work properly. And let's get on with this base. This one takes an int value. Let's just have v and base value equals v. See how this is a base construct so these are our constructors and then our deconstructor and really we're just printing out these messages to allow you to uh, trace the path that uh, the object takes when you first create it go over this later but you don't actually need this in your constructor it's just uh, handy for teaching and then our deconstructor. This deconstructor really won't actually do anything. Just prints out this is the base deconstructor. Like that. That should be all. And then let's get to. Actually, we'll skip the derived one just uh, you know for now while I talk about what happens so 
basically uh, if you create a derived object that object that you create really ha is two separate objects it has one half of it or one part of it is um, a base object is a base class object and then the second part of it is the derived class object so you really have two objects uh, within that one object because you're inheriting everything from that base class and basically when you create one of those objects you um, the constructor of that class is responsible for making sure that each part of that object, the base and derived parts of that object, are properly constructed. And the first part that has to be constructed is the base uh, class part of that object, because you need a base to build upon. So first, when you create that, control first passes to um, the base constructor. So when you call any one of these three constructors or any constructor for a derived class the first thing that it does is it calls the default constructor for the base class so it would call this right here and we should show that we should show this is the default base constructor so when you create a derived object first it um, uses the default constructor of the base class to create that base part of the object and then uh, control passes back to the derived constructor, derived class constructor and then that can finish constructing the rest of the object now say the constructor that you called was this one, the one that takes two integers what this is meant to be is one of these integers sets derived value and the other one sets base value but if you if um, what C++ does is call the default constructor for the base class say you passed in like 20 for this second one well then the base value won't get set to 20 because it called the base constructor which will set it to 10 it's not what you want which mean which uh, means that you can uh, explicitly call a uh, base class constructor within that derived class constructor. So, actually we don't want that. Derived, now we're going to go set that up. So I'll give you some hands-on practice. So for the default constructor, really it's just going to set uh, the derived value equals 10 like that and then um, it automatically will call the base class constructor which will set the base value to 10 as well now the one that takes an integer so derived value what this is going to do is still rely on that default base constructor but now we're going to set derived value to dv. For this last one, this is where I'm going to show you how to explicitly call a constructor. So we're going to have this derived int dv and int bv. And then we're going to use one of those handy things called these initialization lists and we're going to say base so we're going to call the constructor and we're going to call it and pass in bv so now instead of calling the uh, default base constructor we're going to call a different base constructor and pass in a value and then once control passes back we're going to set derived value to dv like that should be all we should really print out some of these things see how it this is a derived class constructor line and copy and paste and once again I forgot to put the namespace std in here so I'm going to have to go do that right now So, we have all of this.
this ready. Except we should add a deconstructor to our derived class. Now, like I said, when you construct a derived object, first the base class part of it is constructed, then the derived part. With destructors, it's the opposite way around. First, the derived part is, destruct, is destructed, and then um, the base class part of it is destructed. And once again, this destructor really won't do anything. Except print out a nice little message. This is the derived destruct or deconstructor, I guess it's called. And we end that. Now to show you how this works. So first we're going to create a base class B. Then we're going to create a derived class D. Now we're going to run the program and look at our output. Actually between these we're going to see out um, and uh, And, uh, and now we're going to run our program. And then uh, after that, uh, I think I'll just do a little recap and then show you uh, how access modifiers work with uh, inheritance because that's a bit different as well. So what you see here is first the default base class constructor is called and then the default base class for this is to create object B and then uh, the default uh, base class constructor is called and a uh, derived constructor is also called and what that uh, does is make sure that uh, both uh, parts of the object are constructed uh, properly now you saw there when I was closing uh, both objects were destructed I think uh, that it might just be Visual Studio or something but it's uh, not printing until I uh, end the program so I might have to show you that at a later point so just to go over uh, what we talked about uh, when you are inheriting two cla one class from another class um, the constructor, deconstructor, copy constructor, and any overloaded assignment operators are not um, inherited. When you create a base class object, or when you create a derived class object, first um, the base class part of that object is created. And unless you place an explicit call for a base class constructor, the default base class constructor is called. And then when you destruct the object, um, first the derived part uh, of that is uh, deconstructed, and then uh, the base class. So basically it's sort of like a constructor, uh, the base class is first and last. And this is also the same if you have a uh, more than one level high hierarchy like uh, the other program we made where we had uh, animal and mammal and human all inheriting from each other. Uh, the same thing um, is done. The most uh, derived class is uh, constructed last and the highest base class is constructed first. Now if you look in our uh, classes you see um, this base value is marked as uh, private which uh, means uh, if you uh, don't know, private means that only um, functions within that within the particular class can access that value. And with inheritance, that provides a problem. If we were to say create a new uh, int get base value like that, 
which is really unnecessary but because we already have a get value here which is public and you can call but this is just an example so derived get uh, base value now if we try to say return base value it should tell us that member base value is inaccessible now you might say but this is a part this is a function of the class it should be accessible well no this is a function of a derived class private means that uh, only functions within the the class and only within that class can access it if you inherit if you have another class inherit from that class that it, uh, derived class cannot access any private values so there is one last when I showed you guys classes I did say there was one third one so this is the la one last um, access modifier and that is protected what this means is that uh, if we go into the main function we can't access it so if we try so if we try uh, b dot base try to access that um, you'll find that we can't so protected means you still can't access it outside of the class but protected allows derived classes to access uh, that access that particular uh, member so that is all for this tutorial um, yeah thanks for watching and if you like this video, please subscribe and rate. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to leave them below in the comments section. And thank you for watching.